Hey, welcome to What's the Fic, where two nerdy librarians, Gina and Meg, discuss everything from literature to movies, gaming, education, anime, manga, and more. All your favorite things that you get geeked about, we talk about. Plus, we give you tips on all the latest free resources from the library. So let's get into the fic of it. Hello, and welcome back to What's the Fic? We are your hosts, Meg and Gina. Today's episode is sure to give you chills and thrills as we discuss some frightening writings where we give you some haunted history, thrilling books, and more. We have a special guest on today's show who is a major fan of most things spooky. Can you introduce yourself, please? Hi, I'm Kabisha, and I work in the reference department of the Augusta Richmond County Public Library. And Gina, you and Meg know that I love any and everything spooky. I am so excited to be joining y'all for this week's episode. Thank you for having me. Thank you for being here. Um, as we are launching into our episode, because you know we like to jump right in. But before we do that, I want to give a short listener's advisory warning. Um, because this is the spooky season and that's what this episode is about, the topics and or subjects discussed in this episode may include books or movies that include crime, gore, or just some unpleasant things that you might not want to hear about so please listen at your own discretion or if you are a teen make sure that you're listening to at the discretion of a parent or guardian and with that little disclosure we're going to jump right into our book recommendations of all things spooky so my first pick is a book that i actually read recently it's called certain dark things by sylvia marino garcia um just to give you a little synopsis. Um, The book is about Otto, who is a young vampire. She's trying to escape Mexico City after a rival narco vampire clan kills her mother and sister. She's being pursued by the clan and needs to get out of the city fast. Domingo, our other character, is a lonely garbage collecting street kid um, just trying to survive the police streets when all of a sudden, Otto slips into his life. Otto is a descendant of Aztec blood drinkers, and she is mm. beautiful, smart, and dangerous. Mm-hmm. And Domingo is mesmerized by mm-hmm. her. Okay. Otto never actually planned to have a companion, but she warms up to Domingo's charms. And the two unlikely pair travel together as a trail of corpses, local cops, mm. crime bosses, and more follow them behind. Mm. So in this story, vampires, humans, cops, and criminals collide in the dark streets of Mexico City. Do Otto and Domingo even stand a chance making it out alive, or will the city devour them all? Mm. Now, this book uh, is uh, currently available uh, in Pines, so you can get it in Pines. And Sevilla Marino Garcia also writes another one of our books. You want to tell us a little bit about it, Meg? Yes. So for book number two from this author, we have Mexican Gothic. And so the synopsis is, after receiving a frantic letter from her newlywed cousin begging for someone to save her from a mysterious doom, Naomi (laughs) heads to High Place a distant house in the Mexican countryside. She's not sure what she'll find. Her cousin's husband, a handsome English man, is a stranger. And Naomi knows little about the region. Naomi is also an unlikely rescuer. She's a glamorous debutante. And her chic gowns and perfect red lipstick are more suited for cocktail parties than amateur sleuthing. But she's also tough and smart with an indomitable will. And she's not afraid. Not of her cousin's new husband, who is both menacing and alluring. Not of his father, the ancient patriarch, who seems to be fascinated with Naomi. And not even of the house itself, which begins to invade Naomi's dreams with visions of blood and doom. Her only ally is this inhospitable abode is the family's youngest son shy and gentle he seems to want to help Naomi but 
might also be hiding dark knowledge of his family's past. For there are many secrets behind the walls of High Place. The family's once colossal wealth and faded mining empire kept them from prying eyes. But as Naomi digs deeper, she unearths stories of violence and madness. What will happen to Naomi? We need to know. So you can check this book out, The Mexican Gothic, at the ARC PLS Library, or you can get it online as well through ebook format on Libby, and there's an audiobook. So there's plenty of ways to listen to this book. And just to go back for a second, certain dark things, you had me at vampires, okay? Oh, yeah. <laughs> yes. You definitely. had me at vampires. Mm-hmm. Yes. So definitely check out these two amazing books uh we have something else here kamisha can you let us know what else we're working with for our spooky reads yes i just got finished reading this book about two days ago it's called the last house on needless street Mm -hmm. by catriona ward now this story is about a serial killer a stolen child revenge death in an ordinary house at the end of an ordinary street Mm. While reading this book, I felt like I was on a roller coaster. When the book starts to pick up, you will feel like you are going through a surprise door every chapter. At each door you open, you find something unexpected and something that confuses you. So during this whole story, I was confused the whole time. <laughs> oh, no. In this creepy house, no one is who you think they are, not even the cat. Wait, what? Yeah. <laughs> See? Yep. Oh, my goodness. So you can also find this book on ARCPLS and in Pines and also on audiobook on Libby. Mm, nice. That oh. sounds interesting. Yes, that goodness. That does sound good. <laughs> well, this particular book actually holds a special place for me because um, you guys know that I'm a gamer. And I love when games and books come together. And Five Nights at Freddy's, The Silver Eyes by Scott Calvin is definitely that combination. So if you don't know that, um, Scott Calvin, he actually created the Five Nights at Freddy games. It is the best-selling horror game series where, you know, we have animatronics, mm-hmm. kind of like Chuck E. Cheese or mm-hmm. Freddy Fazbear's, except um, there's a child murderer that stuffs children into animatronics oh goodness yeah but we're not talking about the game we're talking about the book so five nights at freddy's uh follows a woman in well excuse me five nights at freddy's the silver eyes follows Mm. a, a young woman named charlotte who reunites with her childhood friends on the anniversary of the tragic day that ripped their town apart um it's been exactly 10 years since the murders at Freddy Fazbear's Pizza. And Charlotte, who now goes by Charlie, has spent the last 10 years trying to forget. Her father had owned a Freddy Fazbear's Pizza and had built its four adult-sized animatronic animals. After meeting with her friends, curiosity leads them back to the old pizza place, and they find it hidden, but still standing. They discover Mm -hmm. a way inside, but things are not the way they used to be. The four Mm -hmm. mascots that delighted and entertained them as children have changed. The animatronic animals have a dark secret and a murderous agenda. Okay. So if you are into all of those delightful scares and thrills, you can check out Five Nights at Freddy's The Silver Eyes, which is the first of a series, by the way. Oh, nice. Through the Libby app in audiobook format. Okay, if anybody's seen the images from this, that whole thing is creepy to me. I've, I've seen the bear from Five Nights at Freddy's and oh, Bonnie. creeps me out. Mm-hmm. Bonnie? Okay. That's, that's literally the name of the bear is Bonnie. Oh, I know that's wow. the rabbit, I think. No, the bear is Freddy. Bonnie mm-hmm. is the rabbit. Chica is the duck. Um, oh. And then we have Foxy, the, the, the actual fox. Um, okay. And I love watching people get jump scares oh. from that, you know. But <laughs> it's but creepy. I won't play the games. I won't play the games. <laughs> yeah. I'm a chicken. I won't play the games though. It's it's <laughs> creepy for sure, for sure, for sure. Mm-hmm. 
All right, so that leads us down our list to some YA books that are good for some haunted thrills here. So our recommendation here is White Smoke by Tiffany D. Jackson. So just to give you a little background on what this book is about, it is about our main character, Marigold, who is running from ghosts or is she so basically marigold moves to a new town with her family her mom and her blended family her little sister is piper she's a 10 year old and there's this creepy kind of house that they move into as her mom just accepted a new job with the sterling foundation so they move into this creepy old new house and luckily for them it's free so that's great and um Right. Yeah. Right. Free house. But see, free is not always good, people. Let's get this straight. (laughs) Um, So so basically, they move into this nice new free house. But the bad thing is it's sitting between dilapidated houses surrounded by wary neighbors. And of course, it has its secrets. Mm -hmm. And that's only half the problem. Household items start vanishing. Doors open on their own. Lights turn off. Yeah, yeah. (laughs) shadows walk past rooms, voices can be heard in the walls, and of course, there's a foul smell seeping from the vents only Mary seems to notice. So, um, what's she gonna do? Okay, what is she gonna do? And you'll find out by reading White Smoke by Tiffany D. Jackson. First of all, I just want to say, if you move to a new house and stuff starts vanishing, it's time to go. But that's all I'm going to say about that one. Okay. That's true. But, yes. If, if my the book stuff is starts available. vanishing, mm-hmm. I'm going to vanish. Yep. There you go. Yep. I like that. <laughs> I like that a lot. But yeah, you can check out this book at Pines at any Augusta Richmond County Public Library. Okay. Y'all give me some titles for my TBR list now. Mm-hmm. Yeah. <laughs> check them out. Check them out. Okay, the next YA recommendation that I've read is Dark Power Series by Kelly Armstrong. I really love this series. Mm. I actually had Gina in another co-worker listening to it while we was in outreach. (laughs) Okay, the Dark Power Series is a paranormal novel, and it's a trilogy. The first Mm. book of the series is called The Summoning. Mm. So after years of frequent moves following her mother's death, Chloe Saunders' life is finally settling down. She is attending art school, pursuing her dreams of becoming a director, making friends, and meeting boys. Her biggest concern is that she's not developing fast as her friends are, which is a concern with a lot of teen girls. Mm. But when puberty hits, something else changes, not just her hormones. Chloe starts seeing ghosts everywhere, Mm -mm. Mm -mm. (laughs) demanding her attention. After she suffers a breakdown, her aunt thinks she's having a mental breakdown, so her aunt sends her to a group home. When she gets to the group home, she realizes that she is not the only teen with supernatural abilities. Okay, that sounds pretty interesting. Mm-hmm. Can you yeah. imagine? Like, you're just getting pimples, and then all of a sudden, <laughs> when you're looking in the mirror, it's like, oh, hi, I live here. Wait, yep. I'm mm-hmm. getting pimples and ghosts? Uh-uh, I got to pick a struggle. Right. Yes. Yep. Mm-hmm. That's exactly what it was. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's great. Well, speaking of teens, um, the next one should be pretty popular. It is One of Us is Lying by Karen M. Mc. Manis. Um, I'm going to honorably mention One of Us is Next because it is the sequel in the book and we do have both at ARCPLS. Mm, nice. So we're going to talk about One of Us is Lying. So synopsis. Pay close attention and you might solve this. On Monday afternoon, five students at Bayview High walk into detention. Brown, the brain, is yellbound and never breaks a rule. Addie, the beauty, is picture-perfect homecoming queen princess. Nate, the criminal, is already on probation for dealing. Cooper, the athlete, is the all-star baseball pitcher. Mm -hmm. And Simon, the outcast, is the creator of Bayview High's notorious gossip app. 
Only Simon never makes it out of that classroom. Mm. And before the end of detention, Simon's dead. And according to investigators, his death wasn't an accident. On Monday, he died. But on Tuesday, he had planned to post juicy reveals about all four of his high-profile classmates, which makes all four of them suspects in his murder. Or are they the perfect pasties for a killer who's Mm. still on the loose? Everybody's got secrets, right? Mm -hmm. What really matters is how far you would go to protect them. So, if you would like to know how far they go, check out One of Us is Lying and the sequel, One of Us is Next, um, through ARCPLS in print format. And Libby has the books in audio and ebook format. And if you want to add on a little extra, there's actually currently a series Mm -hmm. where One of Us is Lying on the Peacock streaming service yeah i just saw a trailer for that actually recently and i it piqued my interest i had no idea it was based on a book so that's pretty cool yes let's see what they do with the series and maybe they'll even do the sequel later yeah that's true Mm -hmm. might lead all the way up there yeah definitely interesting all right so that leads us to another book on the list here it's called the turn of the key by ruth ware let me give you a little synopsis about this one here. I actually thought this was a pretty interesting book. So it goes like this. Hmm. When she stumbles across the ad, she's looking for something else completely, but it seems like too good an opportunity to miss. A live-in nanny post with a staggeringly generous salary. Hmm. Mm-hmm. And when Rowan Kane arrives at Heather Bray House, she is smitten by the luxurious smart home fitted out with all modern conveniences by the beautiful Scottish Highlands and by this picture perfect family. Seems a little Stepford to me. Mm-hmm. Uh, mm-hmm. Uh-huh, mm-hmm. But get this what she doesn't know is that she's stepping into a nightmare, one that will end with a child dead and herself in prison awaiting trial for murder. Writing to her lawyer from prison, she struggles to explain the unraveling events that led to her incarceration. It wasn't just the constant surveillance from the cameras installed around the house or the malfunctioning technology that woke the household with booming music or turned the lights off at the worst possible time. It wasn't just the girls who turned out to be a far cry from the immaculately behave model children she met at the interview it wasn't even the way she was left alone for weeks at a time with no adults around apart from the enigmatic handyman jack grant what will happen to our heroine or is she in heroine rowan kane gotta find out by checking out the turn of the key by ruth ware so what was interesting about this book to me like I said, it seemed very Stepfordish. You know, you kind of have this nice modern house, all this technology. But I'm just like, okay, but what about the parents? You know, who she's working for? Why are you guys leaving the children home by themselves in the first place? Okay. <laughs> so I definitely would recommend you check these books out to find out what happens and um, how all of this bad stuff starts happening to this young woman. Mm, now I have a question. Would y'all mm-hmm. take a live-in nanny position somewhere? No. No. <laughs> That's a clear like, no. I was just like, mm, no. No, man. No, 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 no. <laughs> Stranger danger, even when you're grown. <laughs> there you go. Exactly. Yep, 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 yep. yep. <laughs> and that leads us to the next book, which is also by Ruth Ware. This book is titled The Death of Miss Westaway. The synopsis goes like this. On a day that begins like any other, Hal receives a mysterious letter bequeathing her a substantial inheritance. She realizes very quickly that the letter was sent to the wrong person, but also that the cold reading skills she honed as a tarot card reader might help her claim the money. 
Soon, Hal finds herself at the funeral of the, the deceased, where it dawns on her that there is something very, very wrong about this strange situation and the inheritance at the center of it. Mm. Now, this book will have you blaming every single family member (laughs) (laughs) before it tells you what really happened. This was really good. Um, You can also find this book on ARCPLS in the print copy. Mm. It's it's giving me like a clue vibe. Mm-hmm. Like, Ooh, like I love the game clue. clue. It was it was Miss, you know, Colonel Mustard in in the billiard room with mm-hmm. with the jackhammer or something like that. <laughs> mm-hmm. Yes, I love <laughs> exactly. It. But it it's wasn't like... him. It really was you know Miss Scarlet. Yeah, in the kitchen. Mm-hmm. Scarlet always did it. I don't care what yep. anybody says. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, me too. All right, okay. we're gonna have our final selection, which is. The Passengers by John Mars. Now, I'm going to tell y'all, I was a little uncomfortable with this because they talked about self-driving cars, and that's not something oh, no. I would personally get into, but oh, yes. you do what you want to do. That's a horror story in itself. There you it go. <laughs> so, just as self-driving cars become the trusted, safer norm, eight people find themselves in this terrifying situation including a faded TV star, a pregnant young woman, an abused wife fleeing her husband, an undocumented immigrant, a husband and wife, and a suicidal man. From cameras hidden in their cars, their panic is broadcast to millions of people around the world. But the public will show their true colors when they are asked, which of these people should we save and who should we kill first oh my god if you want to know what happens with the public and self-driving cars and these poor people please check out the passengers by john mars in the print format through time Okay, I'm just going to let people know now. It's already on hold for me, for Meg. So you're going to have to wait <laughs> until it comes back to ARCPLS um, to get it. Because I was just, that caught my attention like fast, like hard. Mm. And, and this book caught mine too. I actually found it while I was doing a TikTok for new books in the library. Oh, wow. <laughs> I love That's that. Good one. Yes. Not just like that. Horror Hunger Games or something. Oh, yes. Ooh. Yes. Like, it's just oh, as brutal, but I, a little more. <laughs> mm, that does sound good. I guess I'll have to stand in line like the rest of y'all for this book. <laughs> <laughs> right, right, right. All right. So that brings us to some movie recommendations. So, of course, mm. it is the creepy, spooky horror season. So what is the creepy season without some great movies to go along with all of this? So we do have some movies in our system here that any of our patrons can check out. And first on the list is A Quiet Place. I'm sure a lot of people know about this movie um, Mm -hmm. because it was super popular when it came out in theaters. Everybody was kind of talking about it online. And of course, now we have a sequel. So there's A Quiet Place 1 and 2. But just to give you a little rundown, if if you're not familiar with the movie, um, it is a movie that happens after an apocalyptic event and a family of four discovers that they must live in silence to hide from these monsters with extra sensitive hearing. So basically the whole time during this movie, it's kind of got people on edge because you're in suspense. Like, okay, if they make a noise, they might end up, you know, dying from one of these monsters hearing them Mm. the whole time. The actors are pretty much, acting with body language like they don't talk very often in the film um but i thought that was so interesting um also cool thing too little fact here is it stars hollywood couple emily blunt and john krasinski so if you Hmm. want to watch that check them out in a quiet place one and two and, um, you know, I don't like to give spoilers, of course, or anything. And I'm not going to because it's a movie. You definitely should watch it. But uh, <laughs> you might cry at the end of one. I'm just saying. You might mm-hmm. cry. So mm-hmm. tissues, um, be ready. But, yeah, it gives you a little horror. And it gives you a little sci-fi, too. So if you're into horror and sci-fi, check out A Quiet Place. Uh, we do have the DVD and the Blu-ray 
at the Augusta Richmond County Public Library System. Nice. And I actually enjoyed that movie. Mm-hmm. I thought I wouldn't because it was so quiet, but it is it, good. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it oh, really it is. is good. The quiet place. <laughs> I know. Exactly. <laughs> yeah. Perfect. <laughs> the next um, recommendation is also a popular movie. It's been out. I think it has about seven different movies. Mm-hmm. Yeah, they have seven different movies. It started in 2013. But the newest one is The Conjuring, The Devil Made Me Do It. Mm-hmm. And the synopsis is a chilling story of terror, murder, and unknown evil that shocked even experienced real life paranormal investigators. One of the most sensational cases from their files. It starts with a fight for the soul of a young boy, then takes them beyond anything they'd ever seen before to mark the first time in U.S. history that a murder suspect would claim demonic possession as a defense. Mm. Mm-hmm. <laughs> and you could also get this one in DVD format at ARC PLS. Mm. That sounds just... creepy. Oh, yeah, it is. All of them I... are creepy, really. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I would, I would think like the, the, the title just kind of gives you that vibe anyways. The Conjuring Devil oh. maybe do it? Okay. Yes. <laughs> so, I'm going to just go and fess up. Gina doesn't watch horror. Okay. <laughs> I do not watch horror. And thanks to, um, shout out to one of our students, Nicole, for actually helping give some of these recommendations. You know, mm-hmm. we, we love our horror movie buffs out there. I'm just not one of them. Mm-hmm. All right. Oh so goodness. we're going to jump into one that was recommended, and it is The Unholy. All right, so the synopsis of this is on the holiest weekend of the year comes a film that follows Alice, a young hearing impaired girl who, after a supposed visitation from the Virgin Mary, is inexplicably able to speak, hear, and heal the sick. As word spread, people from near and far flock to witness her miracles. A disgraced journalist hoping to revive his career visits the small New England town to investigate. When terrifying events begin to happen all around, he starts to question if this pheno- these phenomena are the work of the Virgin Mary or something more sinister. And if you want to check out The Unholy, you can check it out at ARCPLS in DVD format. Oh, wow. That sounds just creepy. I, mm-hmm. I know I keep saying creepy, but I... I I'm not I, watching none of these. No. <laughs> I'm going to have to watch that one. I have not seen it yet. Oh, oh, I'm going to write it course. down of now. Course. <laughs> of course. Yeah, 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 yeah. All right. So that brings us to another series here that's very popular. It's called Spiral, and it's from the Book of Saw. So if you've ever seen any of the Saw films, this goes right along with that whole series, that whole franchise. You're going to want to see this one. And it's about a criminal mastermind who unleashes a twisted form of justice in this terrifying new chapter from the Book of Saw, working in the shadow of his father and esteemed police veteran, brash detective Ezekiel Banks and his rookie partner take charge of a grisly investigation into murders that are eerily reminiscent of the city's gruesome past. Unwittingly entrapped in a deepening mystery, Zeke finds himself at the center of the killer's morbid game. So if you want to see some more Saw creepiness, check out Spiral. Of course, we do have the DVD at the Augusta Library. Also, fun fact here. Well, maybe not so much fun, but if anybody didn't know, (laughs) the movie stars Chris Rock, the comedian. Mm -hmm. Like, I thought that was so interesting because, you know, you're used to seeing him in more funny roles. But now you kind of got him in this horror film, this thriller suspense in a more serious role. So that's pretty cool. Oh, good. I I think... If I was tempted to watch any of these, <laughs> it would definitely be Spiral because I have seen at least one mm-hmm. Saw movie. Mm-hmm. One. Okay. Mm-hmm. <laughs> okay, moving right along. This series is on Netflix. Mm-hmm. It's called Midnight Mass. It is an American supernatural horror limited miniseries with seven episodes. The plot centers on an isolated island community that experiences supernatural events after the arrival of a mysterious priest 
who brings miracles, mysteries, and renewed religious fervor to a dying town. Mm. That's interesting. Actually, one of our coworkers was watching this on Netflix, and she had some things to say about it. Oh. Good things, of course. She was mm-hmm. saying that she enjoyed <laughs> <Good>. the series. <laughs> Good. Uh-huh. Yeah. Uh, yep. If something strange starts happening, we um, kick the priest out. that's all i'm saying you know sorry father we're gonna have to find another one thing Mm. all right so uh this one is another series that i heard about from some of my other horror fans out there and it's don't breathe um one and two um both are actually available in dvd format in pines and it's um, blind veteran Norman Nordstrom has been hiding out for several years in an isolated cabin. He lives with a young girl and has recreated the family stolen from him by a drunk driver. Their quiet life together is soon shattered when a group of unseemly criminals kidnaps her. Norman is now forced to tap into even darker and more creative instincts in an effort to save her. I thought that this one was really interesting because it mentions that um, Mr. Nordstrom is blind in this one and all the efforts they go through, people were really applauding how well it was executed. That's just from the first movie. There is a second one and we do have both. So mm. definitely check that out. That's cool. That sounds good. So we have another one here. It's called Blood Red Sky. This is... When a group of terrorists hijacks an overnight transatlantic flight, a mysteriously ill woman must unleash a monstrous secret to protect her young son. So just from that little synopsis right there, this seems more like thriller. I've never seen it, Mm. to be honest, but this seems like something like a thriller to me almost from from that little synopsis. But I, first of all, you know, ill woman on the flight unleashes monstrous secret. <laughs> Why did you get on the plane sick in the first place? Well, yes. mm-hmm. I don't know her situation. Maybe she had yes. to fly somewhere to go get better. But you know, we'll see. <laughs> <laughs> we'll see. You got to check out the movie to see what happens. Definitely. Yeah. So I did see this one. Oh, okay. and it's horror because it's about vampires. Mm-hmm. Ooh, we like vamps. <laughs> like- yes, <laughs> vampire crew over here. Yes. Mm-hmm. So yeah, that was a good one too. Um, the next one is we're back in um Netflix. Yeah, the three part series mini movie Fear Street. Mm. After a series of brutal slayings, a teen and her friends take on an evil force that plagued their notorious town for centuries. Now, that was real good. I liked it. Mm. I heard a lot of hype. I, I remember a lot of people being very excited about it, and they really enjoy it. So hopefully others will, too, if they haven't already taken a look mm. at it. Mm-hmm. Yeah. That seems pretty interesting there. Yeah. So I think it could be time to maybe give a little short story or two. You guys think we might be able to give a little short story or two, some creepy, spooky stuff to give our guests? Yeah, I think it would be good because it wouldn't be fair if we had this whole little episode and, you know, didn't give some spooks of our own, right? Mm -hmm. (laughs) Okay, so before we give these little uh, spooks here, we're going to throw in that listener advisor again. And remember, I mentioned in the beginning Again, topic subjects may include things including crime, gore, or just plain unpleasantness. So please listen at your discretion or at the discretion of a parent or a guardian. Mm. So first story up is with you, right, Meg? Yeah. All right. We have a short story called Seeing Red, The First Day of School by Zinri Howe. Goes a little something like this. Everyone loves the first day of school, right? New year, new classes, new friends. It's a day full of potential and hope before all dreary depressions of reality show up to ruin all the fun. I like the first day of school for a different reason though. You see, I have sort of a power. When I look at people, 
I can sense a sort of aura around them. A colored outline based on how long the person has to live. Most everyone I meet around my age is surrounded by a solid green hue, which means they have plenty of time left. A fair amount of them have a yellow oranges tinge to their auras, which tends to mean a car crash or some other tragedy. Anything that takes people before their time, as they say. The real fun is when the auras venture into the red end of the spectrum, though. Every now and again, I'll see someone who's basically a walking stoplight. Those are the ones who get murdered. It's such a rush to see them, know their time is numbered. With that in mind, I always get to class very early so I can scout out my classmates' fates. The first kid who walked in was basically radiating red. <laughs> I chuckled to myself. Too bad, bro. But as people kept walking in, they all had the same intense glow. I finally caught a glimpse of my rose-tinted reflection in the window, but I was too stunned to move. Our professor stepped in and locked the door. His aura was a sickening shade of green. Mm -mm. <laughs> Creepy. No. <laughs> Yeah. Very. Uh, time to skip class. <laughs> right. Exactly. Right. There you go. Exactly. All, All right. right. That leads us to our next story. Misha, what you got? The next story is titled They Got the Definition Wrong. Mm. It has been said that the definition of insanity is doing the same thing over and over and expecting different results. I understand the sentiment behind the saying, but it's wrong. I entered the building on a bet. I was strapped for cash. I didn't buy into the old legends of the hotel to begin with. So 50 bucks was more than enough to get me to do it. It was simple. Just reach the top floor, the 45th floor, shine my flashlight from a window, the hotel was old and broken, including the elevator. So that meant hiking up the stairs. So up the stairs I went, as I reached each platform, I noted that the old brass plaques displayed the floor numbers. 15, 16, 17, 18. I felt a little tired as I crept higher but so far, no ghosts, no cannibals, no demons. Piece of cake. I can't tell you how happy I was as I entered the last stretch of numbers. I joyfully counted them out loud. At each platform, 40, 41, 42, 43, 44, 44. I stopped and looked back down the stairs. I must have miscounted, so I continued up. 44. One more flight. 44. And then down 10 flights. 44. 15 flights. 44. And so it's been for as long as I can remember. So really, insanity isn't doing something repeatedly and expecting different results. It's knowing that the results will never, ever change. That each door leads to the same staircase, to the same number. It's realizing you no longer fall asleep. It's not knowing whether you've been running for days or weeks or years. It's when sobbing slowly turns into laughter. <laughs> The creepy laugh at the end. I know, yeah. <laughs> yes. And now I can't stop thinking about the the number 44. That's going to be stuck in my right. head. Right. Yeah. Oh, 44. 44. Uh, <laughs> all right. So I guess I'm going to try to round things out. This is some tough acts to follow here. <laughs> um, and just a heads up all of these are from Reddit users. So if the names sound a little wonky. There was a post. Just type in Google short stories under five minutes. And you will get to this and read some yourself. And the final one is, the eyes 
are watching me by Reddit user Ridiculous. I bought a new house in a small town of Winthrop. The house was cheap, but the most important part was that I needed to get away from the city. A few months ago, I had a run-in with a stalker. While I had managed to get him arrested, I couldn't shake the feeling of eyes just constantly watching me. I felt like there were eyes everywhere, at home and on the street. So I decided to move out into the country to somewhere with less people, just for peace of mind. The house itself was big and somewhat old, but otherwise very welcoming. The agent who introduced me to the house had been required to mention that a serial killer had lived here in the past, which was why the house was so cheap. However, he, and later, my next door neighbor, Sarah, both told me to pay the thought no mind. Four other owners had lived in the house since then, and all of them were very happy with it. I loved the house. Its interior furnishings were beautiful and very comfortable. The people of Winthrop were friendly, often bringing over freshly baked pastries or inviting me over for dinners. Get-togethers, they said, were the key to making sure everyone who lived in Winthrop loved it there. Yet, after a week, I stopped loving it. The feeling of someone watching return worse than before. I tried to ignore it, but I started losing sleep. Giant bags grew under my eyes and I began yawning almost as much as I was breathed. Sarah was kind enough to let me stay in her house for a few nights. It was during this time that I heard the legend of Forrest Carter, the serial killer who had lived in my house. While no one knows his exact kill count, Carter, also known as the Winthrop Peacock, was a man with an extremely severe case of narcissism. Legend says that he couldn't fall asleep if he didn't feel like he was being watched. He was finally arrested for putting a scarecrow to watch him during the night. Only, it wasn't a scarecrow. Carter had murdered a 17-year-old girl just so her corpse could stare at him. The story gave me shivers, and after I went home, I felt like there were hundreds of pairs of eyes just watching me no matter how I turned. Today, however, was the first day that I acted out. I was cooking breakfast when I felt the eyes. Instinctively, out of fear, I threw my kitchen knife, which lodged itself into the wall. As I pulled it out, I found myself staring at a pair of eyes, pickling in formaldehyde. I've been being, I've been watching the police peel away the drywall of my house for hours now. So far, they've found 142 pairs of eyes in little glass jars. The scariest thing is, each and every one of them was staring at me. That is super, like... <laughs> How are we going to sleep tonight, y'all? I don't know. <laughs> wow. Yeah. Uh, mm. This is the part of the recording if you decided to skip over everything. Welcome back. <laughs> yeah, welcome back. <laughs> yeah, so those were some really good short stories. As Gina said, you can find those on Reddit. Um, and of course, we gave you some breakdowns of what to watch during this secret spooky season and what to read as well. So we hope you guys will check out some of those books from the library because your library is your friendly place of free things. So definitely visit your local libraries to check all of these amazing books and movies out. Yeah. Um don't we have some other things too, Gina, that we can uh, let the listeners know about? Yeah, some like not scary things. Let's go. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> right. All right. Um, 
first of all, before we jump into like a few of the not scary things, I do want to like throw the ball back to you, Meg, because we're having a tournament, right? Yes, I am so excited for this. This will be our first gaming type of tournament. So, of course, we have Misha on with us. Um, we are actually planning to do a Mario Kart mini tournament. It's a Halloween themed mini tournament at the Augusta Richmond County Public Library located downtown in Augusta, Georgia on Telfair Street. So we are going to be having that on Saturday, October 30th. It's going to be starting at 12 p.m. right at noon. So there are 10 slots available for participants to sign up to play in the tournament. Um, We do have some people that have already signed up. So slots are going fast if you wish to participate. Um, We will be giving out prizes for the top three winners so first place we got something special for you might even have some you know GameStop stuff coming at you um, we also have some other cool little prizes here to give away so um you can definitely come dressed up in your best halloween costume we recommend it because we're going to be dressed up and if you are one of our best dressed halloween participants you could also possibly win you a little award or a little prize too that's going to be a secret until the day of so definitely come out to this event on saturday october 30th 2021 you can always sign up by calling our information desk at 706-821-2616 and please note that Slots are limited to 10 and that this event is for 18 years and older to participate. So check out our first Mario Kart tournament, please. Mm. And thank you. Exciting. It is. I can't wait either. Yes. So we have another event at the library coming up too. Misha, would you like to let us know what that is? Yes. This is for our avid readers. I host Book Club. It's titled Book Club and with Miss Misha. It's usually on the third um, Tuesdays of the month. So the next one is Tuesday, November 16th. And we're going to do it at 4 o'clock. What book is it this time? The the book for next month is The Midnight Library by Matt Hogg. Nice. I really wanted to read that. I love that. All right, y'all. Yes, yes y'all. I'm getting into that. <laughs> oh, good. Okay. Sounds like a good one. I know we're about to wrap up, but I'm I'm putting the brakes on the wrap up <laughs> because you know what we didn't mention this entire episode. Oh, we didn't we didn't have uh-oh. any term cleanups. You know, we we, mm, we, we, didn't we didn't have any art things or nothing like that. But you know what? We won't escape mm. an episode without anime. Tell us. <laughs> <laughs> oh, here we go. We can't we leave go. without anime. Well, I only have nope. two things. It's only two things, mm-hmm. y'all. Okay, two. Just two. Just two. Okay, so right. one is um, you can find it on YouTube. It, it does cost. I think it's like a dollar and ninety nine cent, but it's actually an old school favorite and tradition that I actually used to do every year, which is watch Kakerinbo, which is hide and seek. And essentially, the film is about Otokoyo, excuse me, Otokoyo, which is hide and seek, which is played by children wearing fox masks. And they run around the abandoned ruins of an old city. The children will play the game. Who play this game? They uh, disappear if Mm. they don't win. And it's believed that they're spirited away by demons. Mm. So Kakurinbo follows Hikoku. Ikora, a boy who joins the games in hopes of finding his sister. Mm-hmm. And the storyline is built on the idea of Tokyo losing its natural aesthetic, which includes children's games such as hide and seek mm-hmm. in order for the industrial process to ensue. Mm-hmm. The lighting of the city of Tokyo costing the innocence of children or childhood games. Mm-hmm. So for those of you who probably enjoyed Squid Game, and the like this is a very short movie i think it's almost less than an hour really great just something to kind of look at that's you know thriller ish without being spooky now -hmm. if you want a thrill i highly recommend this for adults Mm -hmm. kakarindo can be watched by um young adults and teens but this one i definitely am gonna strongly advise that this is for 
18 up, okay? And it's Monster by Naoki Urasawa. We actually have the manga at mm-hmm. ARCPLS, and you can find more copies through Pines. And the synopsis goes like this. What would you do if a child you saved grew up to be a monster? An ice-cold killer on the loose. And Dr. Kinzo Tenma is the only one who can stop him. Tenma is a brilliant neurosurgeon with a promising future. Risk his career to save the life of a critically wounded young boy named Johan. The boy, now a charismatic young man, reappears nine years later in the midst of a string of unusual serial murders. Mm, Now... It's a manga and it's an anime. It's an old anime. So it'd probably be harder to track down than actually reading the manga. But Mm -hmm. um, definitely something to, you know, get into. It's definitely got the psychological thriller things and all Uh stuff like that. So, you know, there you go, Meg. I did my two anime things. I'm done. I I, I know, I know. Okay. Thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you. (laughs) All right. So that was our Frightening Writings episode. So we hope you found some really great creepy things to get into right before Halloween. Halloween. And of course, we hope that you check out all of these titles that we mentioned. Like we said, they're available at the library. You can get them through the Pine system. Um, also, we just want to say thank you, Misha, for coming on thank with you. us. Thank you. Thank you. Thank so you. Thank you for having me. Yes. You know, I loved it. <laughs> yes. We'll definitely be having you back on some future episodes because we know you have a lot more to talk about. Yes. So, again, we just want to thank our listeners for tuning in. Of course, you can find us next month with two new episodes coming out. We'll let you guys know what that is. Of course, you can follow the Augusta Richmond County Public Library online on Facebook. And, of course, you can check out our episodes on YouTube, Apple Podcasts, and Spotify, and more. So definitely check us out. Thank you again for listening, and we'll see you next time. Bye. 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 Thank you for listening. Tune in for new episodes every second and fourth Wednesday of the month. If you like hanging with your friendly nerdy librarians, follow our library on Facebook at ARCPLS or on Instagram and Twitter at AugustaGALIB. Like we always say, we've got the fit, so stick with us.